Gotta get me one of those. And welcome to another episode of Bat Dance Discussions. And boy, do we have some great stuff coming up this week. First of all, Rebel Moon Part 2 hits Netflix this week. And me, myself, I will be in Chicago at an AMC in Chicago to see it in theaters. Well, assuming I make it on time. It's still a first come first serve basis, but I'll make sure to show up early enough. I got in last time when I showed up at the time I plan on showing up this time. But anyway, that's coming up. And we got some great updates with Cell this week that I cannot wait to talk about. So first things first. Now, I told you I was going to review all the Zack Snyder movies before Rebel Moon Part 2 came out. Then I told you I would review all his non-DC films. Well, now there are two films in that I did not get to. 300 Rise of Empire, which I know Zach didn't direct, but he wrote, and Sucker Punch. I will get to those another time. I will eventually cover them, but unfortunately I will not be covering them for the Zack Snyder Rebel Moon Part 2 hype series. Just scheduling, life get, got in the way, life got busy, and I've been doing a lot of the X-Men review show with Zod and Sox, which has been really fun. And also, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sil Abdul today. He had a great podcast on the Snyderverse for Snyderverse Mondays, discussing great updates about the Snyderverse and and yeah, it just it was a really it was a really great article. I'm not going to say anything specific from it because it was a member stream, and I forget if this is a members thing where it's like all members can watch on replay. And or everyone can watch a replay, but only members can comment, or if this one is only for members on replay value. So I don't want to give anything away from that. But 
I will say that some of my opinions will be influenced from that video, that great video that Sil Abdul did. So just wanted to give him a quick shout out. And who do we have in the chat right now? We got Integrity stopping by early, as well as A-Pass, Qatar, a Curly Ray, Geek Defense Initiative. Oh, well, thank you, Geek. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, yep, I need to see it too. So please welcome as I bring on this person again. I love having him on my channel. I love his non-filtered opinions. And he's great to have on the X-Men Review Show. Great to talk Winnie the Pooh with. So please welcome as I bring on Zod Rider. How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to be here. How are you? As you look like you're in I'm, good spirits today. How can I not be in good spirits? You got some great updates about Cell. That I, can... you know, hey, got before you say anything, I just want to give a shout out to Sin Havoc in the chat. Hashtag One Punch Dan, one hundred percent. Oh boy, oh, that that's, one. that's perfect. One Punch Dan. <laughs> You know, I wonder if One Punch Dan would win against Winnie the Pooh. I want to see One Punch Dan go up against Superman. Uh, no, I think I think One Punch Dan would lose. I don't know. That One Punch packs quite a wallop. So, I mean, Superman, For me? Superman might get a might might get like a. It might almost be like a. It would have to be like a kryptonite powered one punch. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it would have to be that because this me at my normal strength, I'm not exactly athletic, so I'll just say that. But you know, I've been hitting the gym somewhat, so hopefully one will get there. But anyway, should we get started? Sure, sounds good. So before we get on to sell, I want we had a great DC trail, at least in my opinion, great. I don't want to speak for Zod Rider, but Joker 2, probably the last DC movie I'm gonna be excited for for a while. I, I guess Zod Rider, what was your thoughts on the trailer? I'm gonna be honest, it was kind of what I expected. Um based off of everything that people have been saying about leading up to it you know when it was first announced when they said it was going to be you know a, a musical it was going to have all these you know uh element it, it just to me it just looks it's it i don't really think there's i don't i wasn't surprised by it let me just put it that way it is what i uh, it's one of those things where it is what i think it's going to be like i'm kind of i can kind of projected in my head what i think the movie's going to be and i think i'm pretty much spot on i think the trailer uh gives just enough and um i'm not saying that i'm not looking forward to see it seeing it i mean i'll see it but i'm just kind of because of all the stuff that's going on i'm kind of indifferent towards anything dc at this point it's just sort of to me it i don't know i i I guess I would be more excited for it if I knew that James Gunn wasn't allowed to do notes. Yeah, see, and that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Todd Phillips has enough pushback that he could tell James Gunn to take his notes and shove it up his ass. Right, that's just, what I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm not really, you know... I mean, obviously, Joker 2 is going to be better than anything that uh, Gunn and his, and his crew can come up with. But I... I don't know. I just, I just, uh, right now, I go into everything DC with trepidation until, you know, we get some real, you know, big con confirmed positivity, you know, and that, that's just where I am. I, you know, nothing against it because it, I mean, it looks like, you know, it looks like a sequel to the first one. I mean, Lady Gaga looks cool as Harley Quinn. I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, I, she'll probably be better than Margot Robbie. I just, I, just, I I'm not, I, you know, when I look at it, I'm not looking at it like, 
but I also don't think that it's something that we that we put in particular that we need either. Oh yeah. And I don't think Todd That's Phillips fair. ever intended for there to be a sequel to his movie. His movie really did feel like a psychological character study, a one and done kind of a thing, right? It, to yeah. me, it felt, I mean, honestly, because when I got done watching the Joker and I saw it in theaters, by the way, and when I got done watching it, I thought that was great. It was a one and done. It reminded me of a movie called uh, The King of Comedy. It reminded me a little bit of a little bit of Taxi Driver. It reminded me a little bit of some classic, you know, Scorsese, you know, type films. And I, you know, and honestly, you know, I enjoy it and and I think it's great for what it is. But it's like one of those movies that once I saw it, I got it. I was like, okay, this is great. I I get it. I understand. I don't really need you to expound on it or extend it or to or to go any further with it but because it made money and warner brothers missed mm -hmm. out on all that cash because they didn't believe in it the first time we're getting this one and from what i hear they kind of made a similar mistake with this one too like they sort of you know it's more uh legendary as the company than uh warner brothers so i you know again man i'm just not the I'm just not a big Warner Brothers fan right now. And uh, I just have a very difficult time, you know, being excited about anything DC at the moment. And hopefully, you know, hopefully Joker 2 is good. Hopefully it's, it's, it's free of, it's free of things that don't belong. You know, like, you know, again, like James Gunn, he's like the, he's like, like that Sesame Street song, you know, uh one of these things is not like the other that kind of thing you know and james gunn is kind of that when it comes to dc like he sticks out and it's and so anything in this movie that seems uh particularly wacky is obviously going to be because of his notes his input his mandate whatever you want to call it they won't they won't let zack snyder make a fountainhead movie but they'll let but they'll let James Gunn stick his stick his nose in everything, even though he's doing a, a completely separate thing, and he shouldn't have any input whatsoever in anything DC. You know, just yeah. saying. I, I mean, saying, I agree with that. I totally agree with what you said, Zara. Right? I totally agree that James Gunn should have no input in this, and that yeah. I mean, let's be honest. The Joker movie, they're doing the sequel because of money. Warner Brothers pushed this because of money. Let's be honest here. I'm not going to deny that. But I'm hoping, and again, this is just me trying to be optimistic here, is that I want DC to be a strong brand. And I just want, I mean, I'm just hoping for one last good DC movie before we get all this shit. But I will say this with the musical angle of it. And the trailer kind of predicted, kind of put in what I thought it was going to be. In general, musicals are very comedic, right? Musicals can kind of take the serious tone. But with Joker, I feel like there's a way they can kind of do a musical and kind of keep that serious tone. Is you put it, you make it a psychological thing with Arthur Fleck. And that's what the trailer made it seem like it's going to be because there's certain moments where he and Harley Quinn are just sitting in the theater and it it's clearly Joker's imagination. It's very like you see a Joker performing on stage. Obviously, Arkham Asylum's not going to show Joker prisoners promote the Joker. They're not going to do that. So I feel like there's a lot of psychological things that you kind of see in this trailer and I feel like you, I, I felt you see a lot of the dark tone in the trailer, which I, which I really liked. And, and Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. I mean, I saw her and she looks, I'll be honest, she, I'm kind of sold on her as Harley Quinn. I, I'm not going to lie. Just little things she does, like when she blows her head out in that sarcastic tone and just, you see a lot of psych, psychological issues. And Someone who said this, um, who says that they're upset about Harley Quinn being a feminist icon. Yeah, I it was Geek and Defense Initiative. I can't find the comment. I pulled it up earlier. But yeah, I, I don't agree with that. I'm hoping that maybe this can kind of show. Huh, you know, I've never seen Chicago the Musical, and we're both Chicago residents. And I've seen a lot of musicals. But... It it's just really the trailer was kind of interesting though, I felt like just seeing 
them break free seeing and I, I really like the music they picked to it. Da, da, da. I won't say too much of it because I don't know if I'll get copyrighted for it, but I feel like it's kind of fit it kind of helped fit the dark tone of the trailer. So that's why I'm kind of being optimistic right now. It's because I thought the, the the trailer did impress me a little bit. If the trailer felt like it kind of hit this dark tone, Arthur Fleck so felt like Arthur Fleck, that crazy psychological Arthur Fleck. Just someone who's in love. That's the only thing that's different about him. But he still felt like Arthur Fleck. He felt like the Joker. He felt like Harley Quinn. And in Zod, I mean, you're right. James Gunn should not have any notes in this movie whatsoever. Because, as you said, he this is an Elseworld film. This is not his universe. So he should have no say. Especially because James Gunn does... Look, James Gunn does comedy great. Does comedy best. That's his, that's his area of expertise. He should have no say in this film that is supposed to be dark and serious. It doesn't fit Gunn. And well, he'll pro the thing is he'll probably throw some musical, some peacemaker musical uh, sensibilities into this. That's what I'm afraid of because, as we know, Peacemaker had some musical elements, and oh god, I'm afraid yeah. that James Gunn is going to kind of stick his fingers in the pants of this movie, and I, I don't really think that. It's appropriate. But then again, you know, again, he's head of DC Studios. And this is by far the worst thing that could have happened for us as diehard DC fans. But, you know, again, I think Todd Phillips is a good filmmaker. I think he did a good job with the casting. I think he's he's the right guy for this project. But I but again, I can't shake the fact that, like you said, Batman, this was made for money. This isn't made because Todd Phillips particularly wanted to do a sequel. Because I remember the interviews right after the movie came out, you know? And everything that Todd Phillips said made me feel like it was a one-and-done kind of a thing. And all he would say on a sequel was, yeah, you know, if we maybe if we can come up with an idea that we feel is strong enough, but... But you could tell that he wasn't really sold on the idea of having to come out and make something else with this particular character. But I don't know. I I I uh I'll see it for sure. I mean, I definitely plan on seeing the movie, but I just again I can't help but be a little bit apprehensive about where about what kinds of things could be in it. Because I again I don't want it to just tread the same ground as the first movie just with musical numbers and harley quinn added in that's what i'm afraid of i don't want it to do that because we saw all that psychological stuff before and it was done very well in the first one so we don't really need to retell the first story again just with some slightly tweaked elements and that's kind of what i'm afraid this is going to be this is going to almost be like a musical version of the first movie which is some new which is some new imagery and some new sensibilities thrown in. And that's what I'm afraid of. I, I I think it should be something really unique and hopefully it is. I don't know. You know, I hope I agree. Yeah, that is a concern I do have though, is that it will be the same movie with that. And you know, I'm I really honest, Zod writer, I really wish Sox was in the chat right now. This would be the perfect time for Sox bulletins to be in the chat right now. Cause we, you know, he loves his musical. So he's probably, Sox is probably really excited to see this one right now. I'm thinking, yes, musicals. <laughs> Much love to yeah. you, Sox, if you're watching on replay though. Yeah, yeah, definitely Sox and integrity. I, yeah. Yeah. That, that's the problem. You know, you don't, I, I don't feel like, and, and it's like, we, we keep, we all keep saying, you know, the first one did it so well told the story it was a psychological character study there's really no need to retread that i don't really see and that's another problem i don't really know what else they can do with arthur fleck that they haven't already done in fact i can kind of understand why they decided to go the musical route with this one because they can get away with redressing a lot of things and rehashing a lot of things they did before but because it's a musical and because they got Lady Gaga, they can freshen it up a little more and 
make it into something different while not necessarily really making it into something different, if that makes any sense. I, I just, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I, I do get what you're saying. And yeah, that, that is definitely a concern I have. Like I am excited for this movie, make no mistake, but I can be excited for a movie, but have concerns about it. I think for me, it's just compared to what we are getting right now, very soon with, <laughs> With some of Gunny Pooh's movies, I'm just excited for a ser um, um, a serious DC movie, and I'm just hoping this is one last one last win for DC fans. Well, I mean, obviously we have something else coming out, but at least what's confirmed right now, right? Out of what's out of what's confirmed, hopefully it's hopefully it's it's respectable and just doesn't turn out to be a hunk of crap rehash of the first one. That's all. That's all I ask. Just give us something different, something new. And uh, actually adding a musical element to it does provide us with something a little bit different, but I don't necessarily know if that's enough, if it's just going to retread old ground. And I hopefully, hopefully new ground is broken. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, again, I, I don't, I don't really. And unfortunately, Here's the thing, and I'll just say this as my last thought on it, that if, you know, if James Gunn wasn't allowed to have any input and it essentially is just all Todd Phillips, his own original idea, his own original thoughts, you know, then I would be a lot more excited for it than I am. But because you have James Gunn looming, that's the problem. That's the issue for me. You know, and that's fair, and that's why I'm I'm really hoping that again, just because Gunn says he gave notes on it doesn't mean Gunn gave notes on it. He also said Ben Affleck wanted to direct, and we all know how that ended. So I'm hoping, I'm praying that Todd Phillips told Gunn to take his notes up and shove it up his ass, and that Zazoff being like, okay, this guy made us money, let's let's listen to him. And since this doesn't affect Gunn's universe, that Gunn was like, okay, this is not a battle I'm going to have. There's a saying called "choose your battles," and to me. This would not be a battle that Gunn would want to have, in my opinion. And again, see, at the end of the day, this is all going to be about execution. That's the big thing. Is hmm, that would actually be very interesting. I could see them doing. I, I don't know that the trailer doesn't seem. Uh, well, that maybe would be, it could that, be that would be different. Like essentially, you're telling. So Sin Havoc, it would be like taking, it'd be like just the reversal. This time you're seeing the events of Flex interactions with society through the mind of Harley Quinn. And this time, and then, and then she has, so maybe this would be a way that you could turn it on its ear where the Joker really isn't there. But remember, in the first movie, he kind of inspired these other peoples to open their minds and start thinking in a different way. So maybe Harley is obsessed with him, and he's not real. He doesn't exist, but she is hallucinating and fantasizing about having some type of a some type of a relationship with him because she severely idolizes him and wants to be connected to him on a physical, sexual, psychological level. And essentially, and so you're essentially getting it all from her point of view, but Fleck is either still locked up or dead or whatever. Fleck, you're not, she's not actually dealing with the real Fleck. She's dealing with an hallucination. She's dealing with her perception of Arthur Fleck, the way that Arthur Fleck imagined the girlfriend that he had in the in the first movie. The oh, way that yeah. he, you know, he didn't really have that 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 what was her name? Zoe Beats or something. He didn't I don't really, even remember. He didn't really have that relationship with her. It was all it all just played out in her mind. She didn't it didn't really exist. It wasn't real. And I think that's what you're going to get here. You're going to get it from, and not only that, I agree with Sin Havoc because Harley is a, Har Harley is such a popular character right now in terms of, you know, the culture and the fandom of DC that you can legitimately tell that story from her point of view. 
couple that with the fact that you got you got Lady Gaga, who is a who is a very very popular musician, and you can have, and now you have the ability of her being able to you know to add her you know uh, add her you know weirdness and sensibilities to you know the role and to the character and you know give us a different you know give us like a different portrait of a deeper more psychologically disturbed uh version of harley than even the surface level what what uh margot robbie gave us from what we saw so this so i think that so yeah I, th that'd be one way of doing it if you by changing the perspective that essentially makes it you know makes it make sense because he inspired her the same way he inspired all these other people, the same way we saw at the end of the, the first Joker. And so, yeah, maybe he, maybe he doesn't even really exist in this movie. Maybe he's just a, he's just a construct of her imagination. That would be, I think would be good. I think that would, would, would flip the story a little bit. It would make it a little more, a little more interesting. Yeah. that I like that idea. I really, I hope, I hope, I hope it's done. I think that would that would be definitely would be an interesting twist. And yeah. you know, again, overall at the end of the day though, we just have to hope for the best and hope that this is, you know, one last good DC movie that we get for a while, at least until Cell becomes a reality and how mm, no, I I don't think boycotting this one really serves the purpose because also no. Part of it is Margot Robbie's ego is way too inflated because she partly was holding up the air cut, according to Sil Abdul, with her production team and whatnot. And, her, and Margot Robbie's a big star. If anything, that would just inflate Margot Robbie's ego and and her demand even more. If plus, in my opinion, if Lady Gaga became popular at Harley Quinn, this could knock down Margot Robbie's price a little bit. So, I would say no. I would not boy. This would probably be the last thing we should boycott in hopes of getting the air cut, especially because tone might be more would be might be a little bit closer to the air cut than it would be to to Studio Squad. So now again, we'll see. It might tone might be more like Studio Squad. Who knows? But yeah, I well, but yeah, and, and again, this this definitely is a different thing. You know, this is a different thing. This is the equivalent of like say. Like when you when I I say it all the time, and I said this on on uh, you know on uh, Twitter the other day that the that the Snyderverse saga is a separate IP, okay. And when I say Snyderverse saga, I'm talking about all the movies that Zack Snyder directed in the DCEU. They're their own IP. I feel like Joker is another separate thing. It's it's considered Elseworlds. This is the thing I'm wondering, though. Is it being released under an Elseworlds banner, or is it going to have the DC Studios logo in front of it? If it has the DC Studios logo in front of it, then that means that James Gunn has his hand in the cookie jar again. Unless he just gets producer points on it and nothing else, because... I don't know. I, I, because, again, the remember they said... Well, they did say Elseworlds, though. Didn't they yeah. say that about a lot all of these projects that were separate from Guns DCU? Yep, that's what he said. And I mean, who knows? Maybe well, again, it could still be produced by DC Studios, but could still be get the Elseworlds label because it's not part of the DCU. So right. Right. it just depends on how it's it just depends on how it's labeled at the end of the day. But yes, I agree. Still but part. DC Black Label, you know. Yeah. We just have to also hope that when Cell happens, that's not part of DC Studios, that Netflix gets a good deal, that DC Studios, that they have no hands in that cookie jar. So it would actually be good to see Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 without a DC Studios logo in front of it. <laughs> well, see, no, they're going no association whatsoever with DC. <laughs> They're going back and forth on that one guitar. Like we've heard, we've heard that Gunn had no say in the DC Elseworlds. Now we're hearing the opposite. They're not. Yeah, you're right. That's the other thing. 
We don't know. Like we we don't really know at this point. We'll know when we see the movie. We'll we know we'll know when we see the movie though. <laughs> exactly. If, there, if and... there's if there's entirely too much wackiness that we know Todd Phillips would not have signed off on himself or even you know put in the script. If we see too many little wacky things in there, we're gonna know because by now. We all know what James Gunn's sense of humor is and what James Gunn is about. So if we see, you know, Arthur Fleck in the movie making all kinds of fart jokes and doing all kinds of like things, you know, and there's some songs about flatulence and things that we don't necessarily uh, expect from, say, Todd Phillips, then we'll understand. We'll understand exactly who's running the show there, because like my friend Aaron Fisher always points out, this is the gun show. Okay, DC right now is the gun show. So, I mean, you're if hopefully Todd Phillips has enough has enough pull to get what he wants. But I, you know, I don't know. Um, it's hard to say. What's up, Josh? Good to see you. Yes, suck it, Warner Brothers. And Josh, if you can say anything about the event in you went to last weekend. Feel free to put it in the chat. And yeah, on that note, we just have to hope for the best. That that actually could would have been a good would have been a good would have been a good hashtag too. Instead of sell ZSJL to Netflix, sell Snyderverse to Netflix, a good group of hashtags could have been suck it Warner Brothers and Snyderverse sell it. Those should have been the two hashtags. <laughs> Because those are those came directly from Zack Snyder himself. So that would be you know, that would have been amazing, you know. Suck it, Warner Brothers and Snyderverse, sell it. Yeah, that would have that would have been I mean, something. I mean, you know how, no, you do you realize how you realize how liberating it would be to be hashtagging out suck it Warner Brothers for trending events? I mean, could you imagine? I mean, like, like just the just the feeling of like just total empowerment of hashtag suck at Warner Brothers. Yeah, that would that would be something. That would be something. But you know me. There's Josh. Giving... There's Josh right there. See that that that's it right there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. See, see, and that's what I mean. And those hashtags would make logical sense because they both would have come from Zach himself. I mean, I hey, doesn't get any doesn't get any more plainer than that, Josh Herrera. <laughs> yeah, well, we've kind of moved on from this hashtag at least, though. So, but anyway, I think you know, I think at the end of the day, we agree with Joker too. We just have to hope for the best. That Gunn did not have his hands in the cookie jar. That Todd Phillips told Gunn to take his notes and shove it up his ass. And now I kind of want to move on to this topic right here. Zack Snyder <sighs> wants to wants to do animated Snyderverse. So in an article from, I think, the Empire. Zach put, Zach, hashtag Zack turned on Zack. <laughs> the war animated Snyderverse. <laughs> Exactly. At the end of the day, it'll stay the course, but... That's so right, look, in that, Havoc. In that article, it basically said, Zach replied that in terms of would you do animated, Zach said, yeah, that'd be cool. That would be fun. And I'll, and I'll say this in my honest opinion, and this is just... Here's the thing. I'm not going to ever try to misquote Zach or say, no, Zach meant this, Zach meant that. I have to go off Zach's words. I do think that if Zach Snyder, at his... If, if he was given nothing else, let's say the only way he could get Snyderverse done was animation, do I think he would be open to that idea? Based on this quote, I have to say yes. I'm not saying I would like it. I'm not saying you would like it. I'm not saying we would all like it. But if that was Zach's only way, like, I think put it like this. I don't think Zach was saying he wants to do animation. I'm saying that if he was given the opportunity as the only way to finish the Snyderverse as a last resort... Exactly. It's on the table. That's what he was saying. Not that he wants to do animation. I don't think Zach wants to do animation. I don't think he wants to do it at all. I think he would look, take it. If look, Bad Dan, if Guardians of Gahul taught us anything, it's that Zack Snyder can do animation. 
Zack Snyder is a is a visionary director. He tells great stories. He provides wonderful visuals in all of his films. I have no doubt in my mind that if Zack had to hashtag animate the Snyderverse, he would give it to us in such a great, great way that we would not look at it any differently than we do live action. It would fit right in. Zach would make it work because that's what Zach does. He takes pride in his projects. He cares about these characters. He cares about finishing his arc. I don't think that Jay, that that Zach Snyder, if he had to do animation, I don't think he would take it any less seriously than he would live action. And now at the same time, it's obviously the preference of us and, and Zach himself to finish the movies the way he intended. But I don't think for a second that we we could, we we would look if we, if it got announced tomorrow that oh yeah they're going to animate the Snyderverse on Netflix and they're going to tell the finish up the story in animation. I don't think we would have to worry oh it's not going to be done right, it's not going to be good, it's not going to be it's not going to be just as just as amazing as the original as the original stuff. I think what they can do with animation today Zach could make it work. And I'm not, and I don't have any. And, and the thing is, I'm what I'm saying is I have all the confidence in the world in Zach, regardless of whatever form, you know, he decide he he has to he 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 gets an opportunity to finish his finish his uh arc. He's not I, you know, and so while I don't agree with the people that are going around with their hashtags, hashtagging animate the Snyderverse. You know, I think animating the Snyderverse should be a last resort. At the but at the end of the day, if it if it does come to that, I will fully support it and I will fully support Zach because I know he can do it. That's all. Yeah. And and again, do you, would I have loved for that article for Zach to say, no, I don't want to animate the Snyderverse. I if, if we're doing animation, it's off the table. Look, I, I'm not gonna lie, I would have preferred that. Yes. But I'm not I'm not gonna lie about what I think Zack Snyder meant just because it's not what I want to hear. I, I won't do that. And I think Zack Snyder would do a good animation. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie at all. But I don't want to harbor on this topic too much because I don't want this to get misquoted. Does this mean we should ask for animation? No. No. Absolutely not. <laughs> Are you kidding? The only people asking for animation are the people that don't support the cell movement. If you notice, all the people that don't support cell are the ones out there and hashtag animate the Snyderverse because they know, because they're over here, they, they don't support cell. They don't like the people behind cell. They don't like the movement. They don't take it seriously. These are the same people that have pretty much turned against everybody. They turned against Ray Porter. They turned against Ray Fisher. They turned against Zach himself. They've turned against Henry Cavill. Yep. They're the same ones that are doing hashtag animate the Snyderverse. Okay. And I'm not going to yeah. mention any names, but I can think of five people right now that I know that are out there, are out there tweeting hashtag animate the Snyderverse. Give me a break. Nobody, nobody is asking to animate the Snyderverse. Zach is not going to, you know, and, and here's the thing about Zach Snyder, you know, Sin Havoc, you know, this, Zach is not going to is not going to sit there and say, "Oh, no, animating the Snyderverse nuts." No, that's a terrible idea. Of course, Zach Snyder is going to say, "Yeah, that would be cool." You know why? Because he knows he can do it. He knows if if push comes to shove, and that's the only option that he has, he's going to make it work. Let me tell you something. Zach would finish the Snyderverse with stick figures and flip books if he had to but he will finish the Snyderverse. It's like Integrity 101 is so fond of saying Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 are inevitable. All right? Up, Super Bowl Corey. Super Bowl Corey is here. They're inevitable. They are inevitable. They're going to happen one way or the other. Whether Zack has to hand draw it himself and give it to us in flip, flop, flip, flip, flip book form, if it's done in animation, if it's done in live action, 
if it's done as a motion comic book, it will get done. Okay. It'll get done. It'll happen. So yeah, no, we are not asking for animation. The only idiots asking for animation are the ones that want to stick it to the cell movement. That's those are the only idiots. Yeah. I, I totally I totally agree with that. And you know what? Sin Havoc, as we know, Sin Havoc knows animation is an option. It's not preferred, but it is an option. And yeah, That's I fair. mean see, well, and here's the thing. Think Zach Snyder loves Zach Snyder loves him some Fortnite. That's the thing. He said clearly that he was addicted to playing Fortnite. See, we love that Zack Snyder likes to participate in chats. He likes to play games like in Fortnite and stuff. We know that. And we 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 totally support the fact that Zack is just like the rest of us. So I, I honestly have no problem with Zach, with Zach, you know, on that level. I love the fact that Zach is one of us. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And you know what? Yeah. So animate, and anim how about this? Instead of animating the Snyderverse, why don't you all out there that are tweeting that and are hashtagging animate the Snyderverse, why don't you all animate yourselves? Because you're all a bunch of cartoons. You're all a bunch of caricatures. You're not even real people. You're a bunch of animated, you know, animated Looney Tunes. You're like the 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 uh, Acne, Coyote Ac versus Acne, the cartoon that we'll never see that... Uh, Zaslav uh, wrote it, did as a tax write-off. That's what happens to animation. It gets written off as it, it turns into a tax write-off. Yeah. It, it, yep, that's a good point. And here's my thing with, with, an, with asking for animation. One thing is you never, ever, ever ask for compromise. You, in negotiating, you never ask for that. You want to have some things that you want Netflix to do. And like Again, as Leon says, our two asks are Zachary Edward Snyder and live action. And you know what? I agree with that. You know, once that's done, Zach can worry about the rest. In terms of the cast, Zach can worry about his cast. Because we know Zach's going to want his cast back. Absolutely, Zach will have his cast back. Because Zach, because that's what Zachary Edward Snyder wants. But we were not going to ask for compromises. Because no one wants animation, guys. Like, no one is asking for that, and we shouldn't they do. ever. They want animation. Well, you know why they well, want animation? Because they want they, because because they want to say that they were right because they don't think that it's possible for the Snyderverse to get sold to Netflix. They don't believe that it's possible for Zach to finish his story in live action. So if it turns out that it does end up to be animated, okay, They'll feel vindicated because they're because they're like, see, we were right this whole time. For them, it's about being right, and for them, it's about the stuff that they come up with. They're cloud chasers, all of them, and this is what we're getting. This is why we're getting those people. And yeah, no self-respecting true fan of the Snyderverse is going to be asking and going to be hashtagging animate the Snyderverse. Are you nuts? Why would you why would you ask for that? Why would you actually hashtag that in the first place? You if you're out there hashtagging it, you lose all your credibility as a fan. Get get the hell out of here. Get the hell out yeah. of here. We're not trying to say we're not we're not trying to be oh oh but 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 Zod, that'll save them money. They can if they animate the Snyderverse, then they save money, and they all they got to do is worry about bringing the actors in the booth to do their voices. They don't have to. They can do this. And Zach draws everything anyway. And it's like, listen, you listen, you losers from Loserville. Nobody is asking you about animation. If you really love the Snyderverse, you don't want to see it animated because the Snyderverse didn't start out as animation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I, if I want to if I want to see the Snyderverse as an animated movie, all right? Like like The Death of Superman and Crisis on Infinite Earths and all these other animated movies that they did, if they're going to do this turn the Snyderverse into an animated thing, then they have to redo it all. Then to me, you have to wait like 10 years and then you have to reanimate everything from Man of Steel onward. You don't finish the Snyderverse in animation unless it's an absolute imperative and the only way that it can ever get done. 
which I You're happen not. to not I happen to not believe that that's the case. I believe if Zack Snyder uh, wants to do it, he can get the funding, he gets the okay to do it. A lot of those actors will come back and they will set their schedule, whatever their schedules are, they'll set them aside to come back and work with Zack so that he can do Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 back to back in live action. We all know this. Ben Affleck came back and shot scenes for Zack Snyder's Justice League for free. So you don't think that that man would come back and play Batman for two more movies that Zack is going to shoot back to back? How crazy are you? Zack was doing shooting scenes for Zack Snyder's Justice League in his driveway and in his backyard, for Christ's sake. What in the world makes you think that all of a sudden, oh, he's going to do cartoons. He's going to draw. He's going to do... Get, get, just, just, just get out. Just go away. Just get off of social media altogether. Delete your accounts. Delete your YouTube channels. You guys are disgraceful. And I don't get, you guys are not fans. You guys are not fans of anything. You guys are just losers. You do everything for clicks and views because it's popular to crap on the Snyderverse, because it's popular to derail, you know, movements that actually have traction. Give me a break. Yeah, I totally agree with what you said. I mean, let me rephrase what I said. When I say no one's asking for animation, I mean, no real Snyderverse fan is asking for animation. But you're right. This, I think here's an example I want to bring up. And this is really sort of what my tribal chief said Star Wars. Could you imagine? We all love Clone Wars series. The Clone Wars series is awesome. I love Rebels too. And there's but a lot knew, of great but Star we, But we knew we were never going to get any of that Star Wars stuff in live action. Well, yeah, I know. That's what I was, that's what. I was going to say is that we accepted that though, because that's the side story. That's not the main saga where it's like, could you imagine if we got a new hope empire strikes back, but return of the Jedi animated. Oh, that, that's I, I, basically I mean, what we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're basically talking about here. No, no better. Still. I'll give you, I'll give you another, I'll give you one better marvelous discussions. Could you imagine? Okay. I'm just going to put, say it now. Avengers Endgame doesn't get done in live action. No, Avengers Endgame is done as an animated movie. Marvel fans would riot. Give me a break. Yeah, I agree. And the the, the reason why I was going to bring up Star Wars with this is because the side projects are animated. And it's kind of what my tribal chief says. If some of the side stories, some of the bonus stories that were outside the main saga, like a New Gods project or a Death of Robin project were animated, that I would be all in for. I'd be all for that. Not the Batflick film so much. That one I still would not be for animated. But a lot of these side stories, if they wanted to do animated. Right, right. That, Batfleck, I, Batfleck deserves for his, for his phenomenal script that everybody loves and says is the greatest uh, Batman script of all time to be turned into a live action movie. It's freaking ridiculous that, that, that Ben Affleck didn't get his magnum opus for Batman made, but uh, Matt Reeves was able to basically steal an idea from somewhere else and get a movie made out of it and sit there and act like he's all, Oh, we're going to out Nolan Nolan. Well, I got news for you. You didn't out Nolan Nolan. And guess what? You suck. And I hope, I hope that you don't get a sequel. I, I, I'm seriously done with, with Matt Reeves and his stupid universe too. That's the one good thing that could come from all this James Gunn nonsense. If he cancels the Batman too, literally. I'm sick and tired of it. Every everybody gets everybody gets what they want, but but us, and we're the ones that are are out there fighting every day, trying to ask trying to ask this company to take our money. But they don't want our money. They don't want us as fans. They don't want people that are actually fans going and seeing these movies. They want people that aren't fans. They keep trying to market to people that are into you know crazy creepy stuff like the stuff that James Gunn likes to do. This makes no this makes no sense. What studio leaves money on the table like this? Who in their right mind is knowing that there's an audience for a Man of Steel 2, for a Justice League 2 and 3, for a Batfleck movie, knowing that it would make you money 
and get you out of debt as a studio, this stupid studio decides, no, we're going to go in the completely opposite direction. We're going to make Joker 2 a musical. We're going to give, we're going to make, we're going to give uh, James Gunn the keys to the kingdom and let him make everything goofy like his Peacemaker show. What, what kind of thinking is this? Like, I, like the more I think about it now, the more I realize that it's, it's just complete nonsense. They don't want to make money. They don't want to be successful because all they had to do, I'm going to be honest with you, to be successful, Bad Dan, all they had to do was release Man of Steel 2. They had Henry Cavill on board. If they would have brought, yeah. if they would have brought me out Man of Steel 2, we'd be having a different conversation right now because I'm telling you right now, Warner Brothers would be in the black again, 100%. They, they, people would have went out in droves to see Man of Steel 2. Do you know how successful that movie would have been? It probably would have been the biggest DC movie of all time. Yeah, 100%, because fans love Cavill. Even Cavill has his own fan base aside from Snyder, so absolutely. And I want to address Sin Havoc's comment here. So if... This it really happens. If these animation studios go out on strike, then yeah, there is no animate the Snyderverse. Heck, even if, like that would kill any thoughts of animating the Snyderverse. Because here's the big thing with Cell: the big reason for Cell is Cell can happen now. We don't have to wait for a merger to happen. We don't have to wait for this or technically, that. Technically, technically, and I I'm going to say this again because I love saying it. Technically, since the Snyderverse saga. Sin Havoc is its own IP, okay? They could literally just sell the Snyderverse, hence the hashtag mm -hmm. sell Snyderverse to Netflix. They don't have to sell anything else of DC, just the Snyderverse to Netflix. You sell the Snyderverse to Netflix, give Netflix the authority to basically make and facilitate Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 and any other related projects to those core five films. Yeah. That's all and, you do. And I want to kind of bring up this point here. At full circle, Ben Affleck went out of his way, mind you, out of his way to address, to say that he would be back. <laughs> he was not even asked. He, he was asked a different question, and he was like, he went back and answered Sky's question, not even asked. He did not have to do that, but he chose to do that. So absolutely Ben Affleck is open to doing his more than just the SJL2. I think he would absolutely do his Batflick film. Would have been the biggest it would have been the biggest Batman movie of all time. Plus, not only that though, a Batflick movie, this could be done on a very low budget. As I think I said in my first Bat Dance Thoughts, my first video for this channel, is that it's no very few superpowers. Deathstroke maybe have some sort of super injected strength a little bit but in general this would be a very low budget film so you wouldn't even netflix could make this film very cheap on the dollar they so ben affleck absolutely would be back and you know what i love saw about ben affleck's intended arc is think about it batman's overdone he is way overdone and a and a batman trilogy might feel redundant but at the same time you can't do a justice league story without batman that's why Ben Affleck's arc was so perfect, is that he gets one solo film and then four ensemble films. One teaming up with Superman and Wonder Woman at the end, and three Justice League films. But with that solo film thrown in there, it's enough that he has his own arc, but at the same time, it's not oversaturated over with Batman. So yes, when I say when I say side projects can be animated, not the Batflick film. No, no, no. I'm thinking like the dark side, the dark side project, like a new Genesis project, especially because, let's be honest, even for live action, that would mostly be animated anyways, like the Lion King live action movie. So I'm not going to complain if that one's animated, but no, the Batflip film, ZHL 2 and 3, and if we get Man of Steel 2, no, those need to be live action. And Exactly. Zach Snyder just wants to finish his, his story at the end of the day. And, oh, I love this one. How about this one, Zod? Animate the Batman too. Yeah, I mean, I listen, I saw somebody who animated the trailer to the first Matt Reeves Batman movie, and it looked awesome. 
I could see that done in animation. Uh, you know, um, he's he's right on. I I could you know integrity is right on. I could I could see that being animated. Like that makes sense to animate. And that's probably the only way that movie will ever happen because James Gunn is not gonna gonna bend the knee on this because James Gunn does not want James Gunn wants Matt Reeves Batman to be a part of his DCU. That's a fact. Okay, that's what he wants, and that's gonna be a problem because Matt Reeves does not want his version of Batman in the DCU. Yeah. Exactly, and I don't blame Matt Reeves for I don't blame Matt Reeves for that because I, I, you know I don't care about Matt Reeves. Matt Reeves is a hack anyway, so it doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, Matt Reeves and James Gunn they're in the same boat. They can have each other, but I but I don't. But to me, I, I just think that you know the thing is, uh, James Gunn knows he has no no real ideas for Batman, and that's why he wants. Matt Reeves Batman to be part of his DCU. Yeah, I think because Gunn knows that there's a fan base behind Reeves, Matt Reeves the Batman, and he knows that if he has to compete against Matt Reeves Batman, that his Batman won't. I mean, let's be honest, as much as. I, I mean, look, and, and I'll be honest, like, you know, Zod Ryder and I have different opinions. I respect that Matt Reeves Batman has its fans, and I do hope the fans get the conclusion to their story. That's my opinion, but I also understand what. Zod Rider saying too is that, you know, they they stole it from Ben Affleck. Let's be honest. Ben Affleck was supposed to have his own movie, and I mean Matt. I mean, here's the thing. Matt Reeves even came out okay and praised what the idea that Ben Affleck had, but yet he didn't want to work with Affleck. He wanted to do his own thing. Why? Why? If you love the idea so much of what ben, of what Ben Affleck wanted to do, then why didn't you want to work with it? What is so unique? What was so damn great about the stupid stuff you did with Robert Pattinson that made it necessary to eject Ben Affleck in the first place? What I don't understand, and this is my whole thing with Matt Reeves. If you guys want to give Matt Reeves credit and say, oh, Matt Reeves cares and all that. If you guys love Matt Reeves so freaking much, then please answer me this question. Why didn't Matt Reeves agree to work with Ben Affleck, let Ben Affleck make his, his movie, and then use Ben Affleck as a future consultant on other Batman movies that Matt Reeves could have done? Matt Reeves still could have got his trilogy. Matt Reeves still could have did his thing, but he could have supported Ben Affleck and allowed Ben Affleck to do his thing and collaborated with him. It's like, I'll give you an example. We're all independent YouTube people. We do our own thing. We all have our own channels, but any chance we get, we collaborate with each other. Me and Bat Dan, we do it all the time. We collaborate with each other all the time. We're constantly on each other's channels. Okay? We support each other. We're, we're, we're supportive of one another. And so if Matt Reeves is coming out there singing all these praises to what Bat, Ben Affleck wanted to do, why didn't he support Ben Affleck? Why did he push to get his, to say it's my way or the highway? Why? Why is that? I, I just, I just, all these people that keep saying, oh, Matt Reeves, he cares. Matt Reeves isn't like James Gunn. Matt Reeves is good. We should support Matt Reeves. Okay. Well, why didn't Matt Reeves support Ben Affleck then? Hmm? Why? Because he was an egomaniac and wanted his own movie at the end of the day. And, and you know, Tribal Chief, I'll just kind of say this, right? Hate, hate gets clicks. That's the end of the day is hate gets clicks. They know that. Snyder fans will click on our article, will hate click on an article. That's why. That's why. Because it's popular. Because it will get them clicks. And, you know, again, animate the Snyderverse. Another article. That question was asked. I think it was a fan who asked it. But so, ego and clicks at the end of the day. Yeah, and people think that people think that if you're a Zack Snyder fan, you're a part of a cult. And that Zack Snyder fans are not are not by and large the general audience. And make no mistake, what Bat Dan said right now is 100% true. It, it's 100%, it costs money, okay, 
it, 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 it will get them money if they hate on Zack Snyder. They get the most clicks and they get the most views if they hate Zack Snyder. I guarantee you that Batan and I could go viral if we were to turn on Snyder tomorrow. If me and Bat Dan turned on Zack Snyder tomorrow, we would get the most views on our channel than we ever got since we started. And you know, and I've, I and I feel like it, it. It that's exactly what it is. But because we stick to what we believe in, and because we're real, and we come out here and we tell you how much we support Zack Snyder, how much we support Rebel Moon, how much we want. Sell ZSJL to Netflix, sell Snyderverse to Netflix. How much we want make the Batfleck movie because we talk about all of these things. You know, people. You know, they like they like to go after people that that are in support of Snyder because for some reason it is profitable to hate on Zack Snyder, and I've never understood why it's profitable. I don't know what it is about, you know, making the Snyderverse fandom your target constantly, making Zach your target. Why is it so popular? Here's the thing. If the Snyderverse fandom wasn't a force to be reckoned with, if the Snyderverse fandom didn't get things done and wasn't a strong, strong fan base, why is everybody constantly going against him? Exactly. People like are it's like integrity. It's like integrity 101 always says you can't kill something that's already dead. Okay. So if the Snyder verse is dead, why does everybody still continuously dogpile on it? Why does it, why is it constantly being mentioned and constantly being brought up by people who are not fans of Zack Snyder, by people who want to go after us, people who want to go after the actors who voice their opinions. Oh yeah, and that will be a that's a separate topic coming up later on. I know a lot of people are bringing us bringing this up in the chat. Don't worry, we will be getting to that. But I will say, you know, Zondra, I'll do you one better. I'm someone who defends Ezra Miller a lot. Maybe I should just turn on Ezra tomorrow to get clicks. No, because we have our integrity. We don't talk about what gets us clicks. We talk about the truth, what we believe in, and that's and unfortunately. Again, anything that's rage bait gets clicked, just like this animation topic. They know that Snyder fans don't want animation. That I mean, Let me rephrase. They know that true Snyder fans don't want animation. They know that. So that's why it's ass, because they'll get rage bit, rage clicked. That's just the reality. But at the end of the day, we don't compromise. Zach has also said never compromise, and we are not compromising. So as much as we think that maybe Zach would do it as a last resort, at the end of the day, we both agree that Zach, that animation is not what we're going to ask for. We won't ask for animation. And you know what? And we even have support. And now, again, just to clarify, the backlash that Ray Porter received is a separate topic. But just at Ray Porter himself has endorsed the Cell campaign right before Rebel Moon Part 2 premiered, which I find very interesting because he didn't tweet on a trending event. He didn't. It wasn't like, you know, when Wei T. Cars tweeted, which we support both those times that were in trending events. No, this was done completely outside of a trending event right before Rebel Moon Part 2 premieres. You know why, Zod Rider? Because Rebel Moon's success is hinging on the Snyderverse. Ray Porter knows this, Zack Snyder knows this, and Zack Snyder knows that something is happening behind the scenes. And I bet you anything, Zack Snyder told Ray Porter about this and said, hey, we need you to tweet sell Snyderverse to Netflix. Couldn't have said it better myself. And I think that, and I think this is a great sign because remember, release the Snyder Cut. When actors started tweeting, release the Snyder Cut, not long after, we got an announcement for the Snyder Cut. Let's be clear here, okay? Whenever an actor tweets out something like this, it's because they know something is going on behind the scenes. It's the 100% truth. Ray Porter would not have just arbitrarily tweeted that out in support of the fandom. Ray Porter tweeted that out because he knows something. He's dark side. If he's coming back as dark side, it's advantageous for him to tweet out sell Snyder verse to Netflix. So if he was told something and he knows something behind the scenes, that's when he's going to do it. You think 
Ben Affleck just arbitrarily decided to hashtag release the Snyder Cut? No, he did it because he knew that, hey, now is the time because we're going to get this thing released. It's going to come. Again, like Sin Havoc says here, that's why I, I keep saying to stay tuned and stay the course. Exactly. Sin, yeah. you are awesome. I Listen, I'm all I'm. I'm all about it. And I don't think that we're, I don't think that we're ever, I don't think we're ever going to get these people to understand. This is the reason why you have, you have such a, you have such a strong resistance to everything we do because they don't want us to be right. They don't want, they've been telling us now for, for since these hashtags have been in existence that, there's no way that Sal Snyder versus a thing. There's no way that they'll ever that they'll ever agree to sell the Snyder verse to Netflix. It's too expensive. There's no way it'll ever happen. Dot 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 boop bop bip bop bip. That's what it is. And you're and we don't need we we don't need you know we don't need this. We don't need this negativity. When Ray Porter tweeted this out, this was a beacon of light. It was like Ray Porter sending out a bat signal when he gave us this hashtag. Sod writer, when Ray Porter did that, I saw Sal Snyderverse trending like never before. It was it was crazy how much I saw Sal Snyderverse to Netflix trending. Because, because they know. Because people know. Those Restore the Snyderverse idiots, they know. Okay? When Ray Porter did this, they know it means something. And they better hope and I'll say this for all those restore the Snyderverse morons. They better hope, okay, that that somebody bigger than Ray Porter, like Ben Affleck or Henry Cavill or uh, Gal Gadot or anybody or Ray Fisher even, anybody starts doing, starts tweeting out sell Snyderverse to Netflix because you know what that means? That means that we're winning. And that means that what Integrity said about Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3 being inevitable is 100% true. That means we were right and they were wrong. So they yeah. better hope that that doesn't happen. You see, this is why they, they, they're, 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 they're panicking right now. Because, because why did Ray Porter tweet that out? They know that celebrities don't just randomly start tweeting out hashtags. It's like it's like you said, Bat Dan. If if he just wanted to randomly be a part of things, he could have tweeted that out during the trending event, but he didn't. What did he do? Tweeted it out right before Rumble Moon Part Two. Of course, of course, don't get me started on that trending event because I have my own issues with that trending event. But the thing is, is that he chose right now, right before Rebel Moon Part Two's premiere, to do to put to put that out, which to me connects the dots between Rebel Moon's success and the Snyderverse coming back. Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly right. And I, I'm sorry, Bat Dan. I'm just really fired up tonight, man. I mean, this oh yeah, is, I know. Because this is just uh, it's so it's just so much, and it's just, I'm so tired of the fakeness of people and the bots and the crazy people i'm just so sick of it man that's why i try to avoid twitter as much as possible twitter x because it's yeah yeah ex exactly and okay i remember what i was gonna say so basically when they tweeted release the snyder cut when the cast retreated release the snyder cut we get an announcement about six months later and it was the end of the year and i think that's about what we could get because here's the thing when the, when Zack Snyder signs the deal with Netflix, it's not going to get announced right away. First, they're going to want Rebel Moon to have its day, but also they want time because once they make the deal with Netflix, then Zack has to reach out to his cast members and get contracts signed with them. Because first of all, Netflix is going to get the licensing from Warner Brothers Discovery. Unless, unless, and here's here's my you know my thought is that unless that's all already been done. It could all already been be done. A lot of time has passed. Okay, this could have been something that was in the works since the full circle event, for all we know. 
which is why Ben Affleck was so vocal, which is why we had so many, which is why we had so much, so much stuff leading up to it and why it was so, why full circle came away as so positive. And again, Snyder versus its own IP. So you're, I mean, I, I honestly think that if, as far as like the cast and all that, I would say, and this is just my opinion, I would say they're ready to go. I would say that that's probably already been dealt with. And if anything has been holding it up, it's probably been James Gunn because of the whole, because of the whole idea of not wanting anything to compete with whatever the hell he's doing. So I, but again, those five movies being their own IP is going to be what puts it over the top for us. This is exactly the reason why Cell is viable. This is exactly the reason why it could it's going to happen because of Zack's of Zack's Snyderverse being its own thing. If Zack Snyderverse wasn't its own thing, then it would be a little bit it would be a little bit trickier because you're, you know, it's still part of the DCEU and whatever, but because it's its own thing, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more confident than ever that we're, that we're in the home stretch. And Ray Porter's just the beginning. He's not the first name that's going to tweet this out, and he won't be the last either. There'll be a couple more before, before it's all said and done. Guaranteed. And yeah, ex- exactly. And actually, something I want to add, Zod Writer, is in terms of talking to the cast. Our late great friend Mikey Sutton, one of his last scoops on Night Shift was that Cavill, Affleck, and Gadot were on board for this. This is what Mikey Sutton said that our Trinity is on board for this. And I mean, let's be honest, they're, they're the expensive cast. Those will be the ones who have the big bucks. I mean, let's be honest, Ray Fisher's not that expensive. Ray Porter is not that expensive. Ezra Miller and Amber Heard definitely aren't going to be expensive. So. But the the big the big names are on board for this. That that's huge. And yeah, I agree. Ray Porter is just the beginning. I would not be surprised if we got a Ben Affleck tweet, a Gal Gadot tweet, because yeah, well, because WBD is broke. They need they need Zaslav needs to pay off that debt at the end of the day, but. Again, Ray Porter would not have tweeted this out at the end of the day if it did not mean anything. And I think, too, Zach cannot publicly tweet out sell to Netflix because he, since he actually works with Netflix more closely, that's why on Sky's poster he said Snyderverse sell it. Yes. Yes. Which arguably, if you if you look at Snyderverse sell it and from Zach's own perspective – he gave you that hashtag because that hashtag makes sense because you don't exactly know where the Snyderverse is going to go. You're assuming that Netflix will be the home because that's where Snyder is right now, but you don't know. And Zach can't say Netflix. So when he says Snyderverse, sell it, he's making it ambiguous enough to where by putting that out there, any company could swoop in and say, yeah, I want the Snyderverse. And because the Snyderverse is its own IP, you know. Yeah, which just a reminder, I, what's the Snyderverse IP? For people who don't know, what consi- what movies consist of this? We have Man of Steel. We have Batman v Superman, the ultimate edition. We have Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League 2, and Zack Snyder's Justice League 3. That is the Snyderverse saga. That is its own IP. If Netflix gets the rights, which is what we're hoping, Zach will be at his home at Netflix. He's already under contract for Netflix, and he could get it done. And all those other projects fall into that cell domain, which would be the Batfleck movie, A Man of Steel 2, anything extra, would, could all fall into that as long as it's within the confines of the Snyder verse saga. Zack Snyder's Justice League is its own IP. And guess what? That means that it can be sold separately from 
can be considered separate from anything else, anything that James Gunn does, anything Matt Reeves does, even the other DCEU movies would be considered separate from these five projects that Zack Snyder has done and intends to finish. It's a very, very easy thing to follow. And that's what it is. And that's what it boils down to. And that's why we should be more excited than ever that Ray Porter has tweeted this out. Exactly. 100%. And with it being its own IP, again, he doesn't have to have any of the mess from the DCU, DCU with Birds of Prey or Aquaman or all that. But this is a huge step. And surprise, surprise, Ray Porter received pushback. A lot of people, Ray Porter had to do another tweet addressing his issues, which, my God, like, this is what really boggles my mind's eye, writer, is that before this, these sell hashtags came, the hashtags were that both you and I were participating in. Fire James Gunn. Fire James Gunn and Saffron. Gun and Saffron out. Like, every time a hashtag got shadow banned, we just came up with a new variation of the hashtag. So this is a hashtag that doesn't interfere with what James Gunn is doing, that James Gunn can do whatever he wants. We're just asking for the proper conclusion to the story that we love on our end. That's all we're asking for. And yet, somehow, that got backlash to the point that Ray Porter had to tweet out his expression of disdain for what he had received. Ray Porter's right. He tweeted something that would make a lot of people happy. What's wrong with that? What is exactly wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the majority of people that ran after Ray Porter were bots. They weren't even real people. Because some of the things that were was said to Ray Porter was so far off the reservation and was so crazy, didn't make any sense. He was literally getting death threats from people. People were publicly threatening death on Ray Porter. I saw one tweet where they were like, I need to find out where he lives. And somebody say he needs to die. Somebody said something else. I couldn't believe all the stuff I was seeing. But I believe a lot of those accounts were bot accounts because a lot of those accounts were, you know, one follower, zero followers. The account was just created like five days ago or last month. So in a lot, a lot of the people that were going after Ray Porter, it just didn't seem to me like they were even real, real people. Because most people understand now that when you go after people like that, unless you have a mental issue, if you go after somebody like that, your account is going to get your account's going to get purged. That's it. Nobody's going to keep you. Nobody's going to you know. And 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 this is the other thing I don't understand, Bat Dan. What you just said about our whole the whole mantra is that Gun can do what he wants. Nobody is stopping Gun from doing anything. Cell does not stop Gunn from doing his Superman movie. Cell does not stop Gunn from making a Supergirl movie immediately after. Cell does not stop Gunn from doing Peacemaker season two, even though it doesn't make any sense. Cell does not stop any of these things. Okay. The only thing Cell does is give us a proper conclusion and allow the fan base to get some closure and finally move on knowing that we got a satisfying story that Zach still very much wants to finish and the people involved still very much want to finish. So I don't understand why it's always about attacking somebody that just want more of what they love. In my regard, I feel like it's all just jealousy because they know that we get stuff done and it's very possible that we will get this because we've been so persistent. One thing about the Snyder cut, the Snyder fandom is that we're very, we're very committed. Okay. And we're very determined with what it is that we want. We may not always agree and we damn sure have some dissension in the ranks, but at the end of the day, we're all agreed on one thing. And that is that we want more of the Snyder verse. So I, so for me, I feel like, I feel like nobody else has that type of fan base. Zack Snyder was right when he said he had a rabid fan base. He definitely does. And these people that go after actors 
these these journalists again geek that go after you know uh complain about toxic fans remember they these journal this. these these journalists are not these journalists are not fans i've said it before activists are not fans activism is the problem when you are trying to inject activism into every project when you are trying to inject activism into everything you are doing it wrong it's not about activism. It's not about your political views. It's about the story and it's about the characters. That's all it's about. That's all it's supposed to be about. When you start making it about everything else, about politics and activism and all your little agendas, you are setting yourself up for disaster. This is exactly what Marvel's going through right now. This is exactly what a lot of these a lot of these uh, studios are going through right now. Because you're 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 confusing activism with fandom, and you should never do that. Fans are not toxic because they want more of what they what they love, okay? And if you consider if you're considering the fans toxic, then these people have to take responsibility for the way that they're constantly triggering the fans. They're constantly going after the fans. They're constantly attacking the fans. They're constantly attacking the creatives. They're going after the actors. They're going after the directors. What do you expect to happen? We're all human beings. You keep going at us. You keep going at us. You keep going at us. Eventually, people snap and maybe go a yeah. little bit further than they than they intended to go. But in the at the end of the day, you can't turn around and call them toxic because you egged them on for years and years and years, and now when they clap back, they're toxic. No, that's not how it works. They don't get to decide that. They don't get to make that decision, and they don't get to judge other people. These, these so-called journalists and bots, they're all scumbags, and they, and they, and they, don't, deserve, they don't deserve a platform. Because here's the thing, anybody can write for some online rag and have an opinion, okay? Anybody can do that. And just because you have an opinion and it happens to be in an article that people see doesn't mean that your opinion is any more or less valid than anybody else. But when you try to inject your, your, your political views or your, optim or your activism or whatever it is you're trying to push pedal or uh, shove down the throats of, of your readers or your viewers if you're vlogging or whatever, you know, you're just doing it wrong. And people are not going to respect that because people are tired of that crap. And, that, and that's the bottom line. So while I do empathize with Mr. Ray Porter here for the pushback that he receives, this is what we all get when we try to uphold the integrity of the Snyderverse. This is what we get whenever we tweet out anything. We get DMs, we get threatened, we get attacked, we get people that make it their mission to come out of the woodwork and attack us. We're not going after anybody in particular, but they're going after us. Why? Because they feel threatened by the Snyderverse. They feel threatened by Snyder himself. They feel threatened by the Snyderverse fandom. If they didn't, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be doing this. They wouldn't be going out of their way. This is how we know, Ray Porter, that we're making an impact. If we weren't making an impact, we wouldn't be getting in we wouldn't be getting attacked. Yeah. And you would well, think all the things going on in the world right now that people would have better things to worry about than a group of fans that want more Snyderverse movies. I, I gotta be honest, who the hell cares at the end of the day? It's just movies. If we want more of these movies, let us campaign for them, let us ask for them. It doesn't guarantee that we're going to get what we want, but we're going to keep fighting for it because we feel like this is an injustice and that we should be able to get more of these movies, especially when the people behind the movies are more than willing to come back and finish the story. Exactly. And, and one thing that really bothers me is that people love labeling the Snyder fandom as toxic. People love saying that the Snyder fandom is toxic. We're toxic. But here's Ray Porter getting all these death threats, but Everyone's like asleep, like, yeah, whatever. That's okay. But, you know, again, it's thinking about like this, Zod Raider. If someone keeps poking you, poking over again, going, are you upset yet? Are you upset yet? Are you upset yet? Are you upset yet? <laughs> Knocked out my headphone there. You're eventually going to get upset. You're eventually going to get upset. And, and I'm just going to say this, Travel Chief, 
bullshit conspiracy theorist tries trying to troll the Snyder fandom at the end of the day. No, Ray Porter's account was not hacked. If so, like, first of all, it would he even did a retraction tweet. Do you think his account was hacked for that long? No, absolutely not. At the end of the day, people just want to believe what they want to believe. And it's stupid. And, and here's the thing, Zod Writer. I don't want to campaign for this forever, okay? I just want this campaign to be done and over. I mean, you know how it's affected me to the point that when I'm waking up from anesthesia, the first thing out of my mouth is Ezra Miller is innocent, sells the SJL to Netflix, sells Snyder versus the Netflix. You think I want that to keep thinking about this all the time? No, I don't. I just want the conclusion to the story that I love because I have a big OCD that I can't have the story that I love end on a cliffhanger. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. And I'm going to say this too. Save Legends of Tomorrow? I have no ill will, Ill will towards that campaign. I thought the show became garbage. But you know what? Fans want to see a conclusion to it. That's fine. It doesn't hurt my day. You know what I can do? I cannot watch it. Just like I can decide not to watch certain DC stuff I don't like. Just like the anti-Snyder people can just decide, hey, I don't want to watch CSJL 2 and 3. But that's you don't the have thing, to that's watch the thing, it. Though. That's the thing, though, Bat Dan. They're going to be the first in line to watch it. Yeah. E exactly. That, that's the thing. They're going to watch because people hate watch. That's the thing. The haters help Zack Snyder, just like Rubble Moon Part 2. You know all the haters are going to watch it, and it's like, it's like you know, when people were protesting, and I'm going to say this, it's like when people were trying to protest Justice League by buying it and, like, throwing videos of them burning it or flushing it down the toilet and whatnot, I'm, or breaking the disc. I'm like, you bought it. You bought the movie from Warner Brothers, so they got their win right there. What are you, like, all you're saying is that you bought their movie. They don't care how many times you watch it. I mean... All they care is that they made money. If you buy a movie and never watch it again, they could care less because you already spent the money on it. And that's what these haters are going to do. They're going to watch the movie. They're going to watch it on Netflix, give Netflix the engagement. Or if, you know, maybe it gets a theatrical release, they're going to watch it in the, in the limited theatrical release. They're going to give money. They're going to do everything. Y yeah, you know, it's funny. We're, we're such a small fan base that... The Snyder stuff didn't materialize, but at the same time, we're so big that we can cause movies to fail. Which, which, which is it exactly? And why should Snyder fans support a movie where the lead trashed the fandom exactly? See, and that—that's what I don't understand. If you're gonna blame the Snyderverse fandom for everything failing, then you have to acknowledge that the Snyder fandom is actually the majority of the fan base. Yeah. Exactly. That's the exact point. And, you know, I'm going to say this. I saw the first Shazam movie, and I'm going to say Shazam just didn't materialize. The Shazam franchise just didn't materialize. And, you know, and it's funny, like, Zachary Levi is someone who complains that he gets hate, but here's the thing. He actually went after the fandom. And I'm not saying it's right to give him death threats or anything, but calling him out on his behavior? Absolutely. Whereas Ray Porter is a gentleman. Ray Porter has been nothing but respectful. He's I've never seen him trash other iterations. I've never seen him do any of that. He's always been nice. The fact that he even engages with fans. The fact that he doesn't put himself... That he's actually willing to engage with fans. And this is how he gets repaid by it. And that's well, what I said, me uh, That's why I said to you privately, it's going to... He, it's going to be like a lot of other actors where it's just going to push him off social media altogether because, because he's not there for that. He's trying to be positive. He's trying to be respectful. There's no need to waste your time getting attacked by a bunch of trolls and burner accounts just because people, you know, just because people have a boner against the Snyderverse fandom. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's absolutely ridiculous. And yeah, you're right. He does not have the wisdom of Solomon. My my dad has actually made that exact same comment about Zachary Levi Shazam. Is that he is his Zam. And it just, and again, it just really pisses me off that Ray Porter, I mean, I, again, I commend Ray Porter for coming out and speaking out against this bullshit, but the fact that he had to, the fact that it came to that point, it's just ridiculous. But at the end of the day, 
It's because we made an impact because they feel threatened by it. They feel threatened by it to the point that they felt the need to attack Ray Porter. And I'm going to say this again, just my opinion, Ray Porter, if you're watching this, don't ever, you don't need to respond to trolls because that just feeds them. If you ignore them and look, I'm bad about this. Zod Red, I'm sure is not always great about this ourselves, but at the end of the day, it's always best to ignore the trolls because that's how they win. And that's why, you know, I don't, I try not to pull up troll comments in this chat because, hey, you know what? I'm thankful for when the trolls come in. They give me engagement. So doesn't mean I have to acknowledge them though. You know, people are blaming Cider. Oh my, is this, is something even happening still? I, I, like, Gun, I guess, said it was happening recently, but I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, as much as I don't like Stephen Amell, he brought up one good point. Show content already. Enough of these PowerPoints. Just show, make a movie, and actually make it. I mean, let's see if we actually get Matt Re Matt Reeves, the Brave and... Or not, sorry. Andy Muschietti's the Brave and the Bold. We'll see if that actually happens. I have a feeling that movie's not going to happen because, first of all, it's contingent on these, some of these movies actually doing well. Like Superman... Or Superman 2025, I guess, at this point. It has to do well. If it doesn't do well, these other movies aren't going to happen. But here's the thing. If the Gunbots are trying to go against Ray Porter in this, here's the thing. Like, James Gunn's worried about comparison. Oh, it's going to... They're going to compare my Superman to Cavill's Superman. They're going to compare your Superman to Cavill's Superman no matter what. Unless you erase Man of Steel, Batman v Superman... And Zack Snyder's Justice League, from our memories, we're going to compare. The only thing that's going to change is that maybe some of the fandom will give your stuff a chance if our story gets finished. That's what's going to change right now. Because even though, yes, Man of Steel 2 is kind of part of the ask, the main ask is two Justice League movies at the end of the day. An ensemble film. That's it. So, and if your Superman is good, Gun. It's not going to matter how whether or not Cell happens. If yours is good enough, it doesn't matter if another iteration comes out. So, Why do you think that James Gunn doesn't want anything competing with his version of Superman? It's because he knows that if Zack Snyder gets to put out Zack Snyder's Justice League 2 and 3, nobody will be talking about his Superman or his DCU. He knows that. There's no hype for it now. So what? So, so this is why he's so vehemently against everything Snyderverse, because he knows he, this is why he won't release the air cut, because he knows that David Ayer's Suicide Squad movie is so superior to the stuff that he came out with that he can't compete with it. He knows. So this is why he's getting rid of anything and everything that could possibly compete. He only wants his Superman to be in the conversation. He only wants his DCU to exist. He doesn't care about any of this other stuff. This is why if Matt Reeves doesn't eventually agree to capitulate and put Robert Pattinson in the DCU, this is why I'm saying that Batman 2 movie isn't happening, guys. And I'm telling you that. I'm telling you now it's not happening. Because his whole goal is to get Matt Reeves to agree to put Pattinson in his thing, and he's not going to do it. And you know what? That's going to make Matt Reeves walk. And, you know, then you're going to have something completely new, which, again, is where Andy Muschietti's Brave and the Bold comes in, which I also think is a bunch of bull a baloney. I don't think that... Andy Muschietti is going to direct a uh, a Batman movie for James Gunn, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, and, Take and you know what? And that what you will. exactly because the thing is, if the Flash succeeded in the box office, they would they would have had shareholders would have demanded a sequel to that film. They would have we would have gotten some Elseworld DCEU, which would have competed against James Gunn's DC. And you know what, Mikey Sutton told me, Zai writer, before he passed away, is that if the Flash two were well, when the Flash 2 was likely going to happen at the time was that Ben Affleck was likely going to be in it as Batman. So you had a competing Batman against James Gunn's Batman, and Gunn did not want that. So, yeah, that's what it is. At the end of the day, it's all about ego, and yeah, sure, delayed, right. 
Didn't Ben Affleck's Batman movie get delayed? And we saw what happened. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. And what this was, Ray Porter getting attacked, all this was, at the end of the day, was just a bunch of trolls, gun trolls, Reed trolls even, upset that someone has something positive to say. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Because at the end of the day, this does not take away from anything else. And honestly, too, what this will do, James Gunn movie, his movie will be judged on its own merits. Because if we get the conclusion to our story, why would I be against James Gunn's movie? We got my conclusion. I'm going to judge your movie based on your quality of the movie. Not on the fact that you stole Cavill's story from us, because Cavill got his story. And you know what? I'm, I'm not going to tell you this, Zod, right? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not going to communicate any compromises to Netflix. I'll put it like that. But I'll just say this. I'd be happy with a complete story for Cavill. That's what I'm asking for at the end of the day. That's what we're all asking for is that Cavill announced he was back. And this would be a way for WBD to reconcile that. To be like, hey, you know, we promised Cavill back as Superman. Well, we got you Cavill back as Superman. He will be Superman. He will be the Netflix Superman, which actually transitions us, Zod Rider, to this point right here. Zack Snyder just, he just happened to find out an old picture of Henry Cavill as Superman. It, it, it's, isn't it just, doesn't it just feel so random the week that Rebel Moon Part 2 is coming out? He just has this random picture of Ka of his Superman. Yeah, yeah, you know, just like it was random when, uh, you know, Ray Porter tweeted out Cell, right? I mean... Interesting how that works. There are no because... there are no coincidences in the Snyderverse, folks. Batman doesn't believe in coincidence, so neither do I. And we all know again, Cavill is the face of of the Snyderverse. It's Cavill, his Superman. He is the main character of that story because the whole pentology, Zach's main story arc, the essentially the Skywalker saga of the Snyderverse, centers around Henry Cavill's Superman. It is his story at the end of the day. It's the evolution of him becoming is, the it Superman is the, we know. It is, it is the rise, fall, and redemption of a hero. That's what it is. It's very Joseph Campbellian. And Star Wars in a way, too. Because that's what the Skywalkers, the six films and only six films of the Skywalker saga is about. The rise, fall, and redemption of Anakin Skywalker. So... And, you know, I just want to say congratulations to Henry Cavill. We, I guess it was announced today that he's expecting his first child. Yes, congratulations to Henry Cavill. You know, and it's important to acknowledge these actors. You know, that it reminds you, actors are people at the end of the day who have their own families and their own victories in their life that is worth celebrating. And, again, being a dad is, I mean, I can't say from experience because I'm not one, but, you know, it's a, it's a thing to be proud of. And it just, and again, I think, I think it's really great for Henry Cavill. And I think this will, and you know, in some ways too, Hayden Christensen said he got some perspective as Anakin Skywalker after being a dad. So not that this is the most important thing, mind you, but he, he did say that with Ahsoka that influences his character, his portrayal on Ahsoka. Henry Cavill, Superman's going to be a dad because Lois Lane is pregnant. That can have some real life influence on that too. So I mean, and again, not that that's the most important thing for the story. Obviously, Henry Cavill's personal life is more important, but just as an added bonus, so. But still, again, I'm really, you know, we're both really happy for you, Cavill. I don't know if Cavill's really watching this, but on the off chance that he is, we know that we know that Zack Snyder watches this channel. So Zack Snyder, could you tell Cavill that we're both happy for him, please? Absolutely. And yeah, so I agree with all your points there with regards to Henry Cavill. I think it's at this point. Yeah. I mean, and Zach posting that Henry Cavill Superman picture was not coincidence, people. It all yeah. ties in. Cavill is Henry Cavill Superman at the end of the day. That is Henry Cavill is is Zack Snyder Superman. Ben Affleck is Zack Snyder's Wonder Woman, or Batman. Gal Gadot is Zack Snyder's Wonder Woman. And like it or not, Ezra Miller is Zack Snyder's Flash. Stop gender swapping these characters, Bat Dan. What the heck is the matter with you, man? 
Did not mean to do that. Sorry. Did not. <laughs> he's, he's gender. Hashtag gender swapping the Snyder verse. <laughs> yeah, you know, Integrity was making a joke about me saying something cancelable on here. And yeah. But you know, so Zod Rider, though, I have another theory about what the picture could also, because I think this picture has a double meaning. Yeah. We know that Mikey Sutton scooped that Henry Cavill was going to be in Rebel Moon Part 3. And you know that I've always theorized that I've added on to that. That my theory is that Cavill is going to make a cameo at the end of Rebel Moon Part 2 to set up Rebel Moon Part 3. So I think that's another, like, I think that's the double meaning. I think it does mean the Snyderverse, the DC Snyderverse, but I also think it's foreshadowing Cavill's role in Rebel Moon Part 2. Yeah could be right i mean again mikey did mikey did you know allude to it and i think it's it's you know it's a it's a distinct possibility yeah there's a reason why this stuff is planned before rebel moon part two because and you know what I, and again this is where again i shout out skywalker and leon so much for the cell campaign and one thing that they do really well is that they is that they promote Rebel Moon. They promote Zack Snyder's current projects because that was an issue in hindsight with Restore is that they did not promote the current projects as much. Army of the Dead was a, was an afterthought. Whereas, no, with Cell, we're absolutely hyping up Rebel Moon Part 2. I'm going to the theater to see it. Now, I did hype up Army of the Dead, so I'm not saying all Snyder fan fandom were like that, but no, I'm going out of my way. I mean, I live in the suburbs, people, and I refuse to drive in the city. I'm I have to, first of all, take a half day off work to make sure I get to the theater in time. I'm taking a bus, a train, another bus, just to get to the theater, just to get to the movie theater. This is a lot of effort for me to do, but I'm doing it for Rebel Moon, for Zack Snyder, because I want to see the movie at least once the way it's meant to be seen. Because unfortunately, they still did not do more theatrical options like I was hoping they would do for part two, but at least I'll get to see this in theaters again, so... I can't wait for Wednesday, but yes, this stuff is being planned before Rebel Moon Part 2 for a reason. For a reason. Just like Ray Porter's post, just like Henry the the random picture of Henry Cavill as Superman. Stuff is brewing, and I think what this also means, Zod Rider, is that we need to support Rebel Moon Part 2 for, the, for Cell to happen, because... Netflix needs to see success on Zack Snyder. They need to see that Zack Snyder himself is a commodity that they need, because this is a lot that they're asking of, because yes, they do have to license this stuff. They do have to pay a licensing fee. They have to pay for bigger actors, because Rebel Moon, let's be honest, there aren't really big stars in that movie, but there are for Justice League 2 and 3. The Trinity is expensive, and they're, they alone are a paycheck. And Effects, although Rebel Moon Part 2 didn't have had a lot of effects that were good, so maybe not that as much, but the point is it's more expensive. So that's why they need to see Zack Snyder is worth it with Rebel Moon before they invest even more in Zack Snyder. So I think, again, that's why they're saying support Rebel Moon Part 2. Rebel Moon Part 2 needs support, and I think, again, that's what this all means at the end of the day. Ray Porter's post, Henry Cavill's picture that Zack Snyder post of his Superman and Correct me if I'm wrong, it's the black suit Superman, right? The Snyderverse Superman, not the Justice Superman. Right. Let me just double check on that, actually, because uh, I got Vera on my phone, so I don't say anything wrong in the chat or uh, on here live. And people are like, Bat Dan, you are wrong. It's actually this. And yep, it's the... Uh, I can't... Uh, I can't even tell the color. It's like the color grading is kind of weird. It's like... It's like a blue uh, i think it actually might be the colored suit actually the blue suit it's like it's like a very dark picture because but the cape looks kind of red though the cape looks red to me but still. Well, i remember he did the and, black he did the black suit afterwards he did it you know in post so yeah that's a good point that's why it was a special kind of blue henry cavill never wore the black suit that's actually a really good point Although it didn't take a special suit all the time, because remember the scene where Henry Cavill's crying about Lois Lane's death in Cyborg's vision? Mm -hmm. That was actually an alternate take from Man of Steel. Henry Cavill confirmed yeah. that. Yeah. It so the point is, was. that wasn't that wasn't the special colored suit. So Zach was able to make it work at certain points with the 
main suit color. So, but I'm sure it was harder. But see, and, th and this is the issue for store, though, is that when WBD was finally giving us what we wanted, Henry Cavill back as Superman, people nitpicked over details and didn't show up. And that's partly what led to the reboot and led to putting gun in power. But Cell is, Cell is the evolution. And look, I would be thankful for my time with Restore. I had a great time with Restore. I think it helped get us through a lot. But now we have to move on to the next step, which is Cell, which Sky came up with. Sky came up with the next evolution of Cell. And I think it will happen, Sin Havoc, because... Oh, yeah, Josh. I, I guess... Can you say anything briefly about Rebel Moon Part 2 in the chat? About the experience? Yeah, I agree. I agree, Sin Havoc. People, especially, I'm going to say this. Again, I always call this out. A lot of these accounts claim to support Ezra Miller through all the allegations. They claim to support Ezra Miller, yet they boycotted The Flash. They boycotted The Flash, the movie that starred Ezra Miller. And I can guarantee you, people did not associate that boycott with the five minutes of screen time Ray Fisher had. And I can guarantee you that The Flash succeeded, Invincible would not have recast Ezra Miller. I don't care what that article said. Ezra Miller did not have a lot of projects coming up. And voice casting, you, here's the thing with voice, you can redub. Okay, you can always get a fill in, a stand in actor for the animation and bring in the correct actor for redubbing it before final production. So, yes, Restore didn't know what they wanted at the end of the day. So, Cell is the evolution. This picture means something. This picture, and actually, you know what? Any final thoughts on the picture, Zod Rider? No. And then just wrap up, you know, at the end of the day, we have a lot of great stuff that we look forward to. This was a huge monument. What started off as just Skywalker, just bring up this idea on YouTube, turning into this. I, I just, again, I, I do have to shout out Skywalker and Leon for what we've accomplished, what we've all led to right now. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, Rebel Moon Part 2 comes out this Friday, guys. Support it. Support it. Here's the thing. Forget if you know. Forget if you don't support Cell for a moment. If you support Zack Snyder, whether or not you think Zack Snyder, you want Zack Snyder to do more DC or not, support Zack Snyder's projects. Yes, even if it's not the director's cuts. Netflix looks at that engagement. That is success for Zack Snyder. We want all of Zack's versions of the movies movies to su succeed, not some of the versions of his movie to succeed. Yep. Let's see. Rebel Moon is the end. Okay. That picture looks Reese. Huh. Right. Your opinion, Sin Havoc. Yeah, I'm sure that's just your opinion. <laughs> you know, if you know, you know. I'm not going to say anything publicly anymore, but privately. Oh, God. It's not. I'm just, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to. Uh... Keep my mouth shut. Uh, yep, this was. I guess any any thoughts on this on this sentiment? Is any final thoughts you want to say on this and about Cell and Rebel Moon Part Two coming up? Uh no. I mean, I'm I'm super excited, man. I think we're I think we're right around the corner from uh, from some great great things, big things. Definitely support Rebel Moon Part Two. And Rebel Moon, uh, and uh, well, we're going to be getting the director's cuts real soon too. So that's another pause. In August, that was announced in August, or it will be in August. So I'm excited for this. I guys, we have a lot of great stuff coming up, and coming up on this channel. Hopefully tomorrow's Zod Rider and I will be back on the channel tomorrow with Sox Bulletin for another episode of the X Men Review Show. There's been some. Weary weather in Illinois, though, so that may not, internet might not be great, and possible shelter will need to be taking place, so we'll see about that, but we'll kind of play that by ear a little bit, but I guess, Zod Rider, what's coming up on your channel? Well, Wednesday, I've got episode 100 of Late Night Q&A with Zod Rider coming up, so... I'm looking forward to that finally getting to 100. It's a milestone for that for that series. And uh yeah, um I'll be doing more late night Q&As and then at the end of April, you'll be able to catch A Pass and I for another 
installment, long awaited, of I don't get it. So it'll be cool. Yeah. I can't wait. Unfortunately, I'll have to catch that episode of Late Night Q&A on replay as I will be seeing Rubble Moon at that time. But Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll shout you out. I'll shout you out that night for uh, going to see Rebel Moon for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, really? That's good to hear. And and I guess com- coming up on my channel is that hopefully I'm going to get a Rebel Moon Part 2 review up. I'm for another episode of Space Tastic Discussion, so can't wait for that and yeah hopefully the x-men review show and and don't worry guys the the sucker punch stream and the 300 rise of empire stream are gonna happen just again it's all scheduling at the end of the day but a lot of great stuff coming up with this channel and i'll definitely be doing a lot more stuff to hype up sell because i'm more i'm now convinced more than now that now's the time to keep fighting especially with sin havoc himself saying to keep fighting and guys if you like this video please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more unique takes, interesting thoughts, great rants such as these, and fabulous discussions. And on that note, have a fantastic day.